Mm, come here. Daka daka. Daka daka. Oh, well, that works. Alright. Come here, F84. Daka daka. Daka daka daka. Come on. Daka daka. No, no Daka. Okay, here we go. This this is battle get the hit. There we go. Beautiful. Alright, what the hell is that behind me? Big mine. Alright, come here, lad. Oh goodness me. Stock crew noises. Oh Jesus. I need to upgrade my crew. Bloody Nora, mate. This is this is this is this is blammy territory. Right, MiG nines. Uh, how to defeat them? Yes. Oh no, I've screwed up royally here. His friend's gonna come clean me up. No, no, no! Don't do it. Don't, don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Don't you dare shoot me. How has he not killed me? Like I'm in literally a perfect position for him to nail me, yet he can't do that. All right, we're gonna pull around and away from him. Hold on. <laughs> Well, that works. G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome yourselves back to War Thunder. I hope you're enjoying the daily content. Yeah, I know, daily content. Please help me. I'm going to die. Moving on. Uh, thank you very much for 40,000 subscribers. We recently reached that milestone. I appreciate it. Now onwards to 50k. If I do sound like I'm shivering, it's because it's zero degrees Celsius here. Um, and I am utterly just sort of shaken up and my room is extremely cold. We've been taking a look at probably the best jet in War Thunder of this patch. Of Red Skies, this is my favorite little machine. And I've only played like three, four games in it. And today we're going to be showcasing my first and a little bit of the second game. Obviously you saw that in the intro. Um, I don't really need to say anything more. This is a fun little jet. It's a rank five, but already 8.0. Uh, it's something too. Italian too. The Sagitaro. No, that's probably not how you pronounce it. Uh, it does have a 40 millimeter bulletproof glass panel and a steel 6.5 mil behind the pilot. In terms of X-ray... You can almost call this a Panzerfaust jet. That uh, Rolls-Royce Derwent engine looks like a warhead for a Panzerfaust, in a way. With two 30mm Hispano cannons and everything you need, this machine is basically, I don't, I don't know, S-tier. Very forgiving aircraft, and we'll go through that as the, um, as the video unfolds. Anyway, on to the intro. I think I've done enough faffing about. We're going to climb to altitude and we're going to attack a B-29. Now this machine is certainly a decent one. I, I do enjoy it, actually. It's very carefree, very easy. 240 rounds for the guns, though. Um, you have to really be selective with how you approach this particular aircraft. You know, it flies like an F-5 in a way, but without afterburner. It reminds me, obviously, of the early G-91s, but this thing has cannons. <laughs> and I really like cannons. Um, obviously, my Australian internet doesn't like cannons, but that's okay. We figure things out, and what I need to learn is trigger discipline. Here I am just firing willy-nilly at this 262, and I'll even hit him. Uh, but flying the aircraft is not hard, aside from the fact that I have a stock crew, and that is driving me up the wall. I have since upgraded the crew since recording uh, this kind of little bit of clip, but I included this particular uh, game because it's rather interesting. Interesting because it's rather average, but at the same time, well, there's the first kill. And this is my very first match in the aircraft. I'm still trying to figure out the, the kinks, and at least involved in how to fly this machine. I've had immense fun since then, and uh, while I haven't really got used to the guns, I have necessarily had a great deal of fun just flying around. It's a flyable aircraft. It's tiny. This thing is so mobile, it, it's ridiculous. The cockpit is really small. It's really quite quaint. And the Rolls-Royce engine that you've got inside this thing is decently powerful enough that at higher speeds, you can do whatever. I mean, it's not the greatest acceleration, but between the, you know, the speeds of about 500 and about 900, you're perfectly fine in doing whatever the hell you want. Whether it's rushing, whether it's climbing, whether it's maintaining altitude, or just, you know, generally harassing people. 262 comes for a pass, absolutely misses that opportunity. As you can see, you're doing 10 Gs, 8 Gs, uh, briefly 11 Gs there. And that 262 doesn't know exactly what's about to hit him. But I will try. I'll try my best. And a, a part of it is just learning gun discipline. And coming through, we're about to hit this 262. Although hit is really understatement there. I could have easily led just a little bit better and that 262 wouldn't have standed a chance. That's okay. Uh, you, you live and you learn, you know. You continue to thrive. 
You know, it's one reason why I was having a difficult time in the Sea Vixen yesterday is because I just couldn't get the radar to work with the missile. I don't know what it was. It just wasn't locking correctly. So it takes a long time not only to arm the missile, but obviously, you know, get a decent hit. And there we go. That 262 is basically toast. This thing outclasses them in every single matter. And uh, there is a Seahawk, probably one of your better adversaries. Seahawks, G91s, probably the worst uh, aircraft you could ever face is MiG-17s and obviously your F-86s. Now, what can you do against those aircraft? They're significantly faster than you, uh, that they outperform you in most scenarios, except for maneuverability. And this thing doesn't have any countermeasures, doesn't have any ordnance of its own. It's only got the cannons, and it's a light fighter, in a way. Seahawk tries to get a bead on me. I have no idea what ends up happening once he engages that meteor, as I black out completely. As I'm trying to stop my pilot desperately from overloading. It's a little bit of annoyance there, but hey. When, you, when your aircraft is doing 14 Gs, does it really necessarily matter? No. Now, I don't know what he was doing here. He's flying straight. Most people sort of just end up by flying away and try to avoid the target, whereas I managed to kill that Seahawk because he was flying straight. But was he recovering? I don't necessarily know. To return to base, rearm, and at least get some more ammunition, because that is definitely the key. Now, this game would have been fantastic had I had actually not had an Australian internet moment. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But I wanted to talk about uh, yesterday's video, the Sea Vixen. I indicated that Fox 3 was an active radar-guided missile, like an AIM-120. Yeah, that's not the case. I know my Fox 1, 2, and 3. Fox 1 is launch of semi-active radar-guided missile, like AIM-7 and Sparrow. Um, Fox 2 is launch of uh, infrared-guided uh, missile, so I know that. And Fox 4 is, well, used to be an airborne uh, call for cannon fire, although I don't think it's really been used. Um, so, yes, I do know my Foxes. And an impressive landing by the F-84 pilot who hadn't had a wing and flown exactly 13 kilometers across the map and actually managed to magnificently land that. Props to him. Difficulty landing without a wing is definitely paramount. But anyway, we'll reload, rearm, and we're going to see what happens next. So, there's an Su-9 and there's a Tu-14. And this could be a moment of many kills. There's three remaining players on the enemy team. And I'm thinking, well, how hard can it be? Well, obviously... And there is a dot over there. I'm just checking. The AI Yak 38 is flying around, and it's actually kind of spooking me. And for some reason, they've nerfed the spotting distance for certain types of aircraft. I think it's between 5 and 4 kilometers, and sometimes even 3 kilometers, depending on your keen vision skill. And obviously, I'm just kind of like, wow. You used to be able to spot targets at about 8 kilometers, depending on where you were looking. And obviously, there's a hard render limit at 10 kilometers as well. So, eh, who knows at this stage and, and, and point. Now, I would be flying uh, directly straight and level, except that I have spotted a target. Wait for this. I'm just looking down below me, and just above my wing there, I've spotted a bomber. Well, I think it's a bomber. It could be a fighter aircraft. Who knows? But I've turned directly towards him because I've noticed him. and I'm just keeping an eye on him just below us there, making sure that I can actually still see the target. So we're going to go dive in, and this is basically when things turn to worst. I have a bit of an Australian internet moment. So you watch this. Packet loss. More packet loss. I'm trying to correct myself by pulling up. I'm fighting the system. Still trying to pull up. There is a TU-14 down there who is unaware of my presence currently. I'm trying to pull up. You know, I'm getting 25% packet loss, 30% packet loss, and unfortunately that is no bueno. That B-29 we hit earlier, we managed to actually kill. Unfortunately, I'm now out of this match. And watch. The system finally takes over, realizes that I have basically fucked up. <laughs> I'm raging in, in, in chat, or was it going to, kick me back out of the game, and then immediately told me I could return to the same battle, despite me not having any control of an aircraft and obviously crashing. Now, my, to my dismay, you know, we lost this one. They could have easily won this one. It's just disappointing. But the average experience in this thing is pretty good, right? The Sakaratario, or whatever the bloody hell you want to pronounce it, is a fantastic little jet, and I highly recommend you go play it, because it's going to be probably up-tiered in the worst possible way and scenario, due to people just having a fun, fantastic time with it. Anyway, that's it for today. I know a little bit short, but I uh, hope you enjoyed.